I am not a destroyer of companies. I am a liberator of them. The point is, ladies and gentlemen, that greed, for lack of a better word, is good. Greed is right. Greed works. I'm Jonathan Quigley, and today, today we're going to make a capitalist martini. Yay! Let's go over the ingredients, which are gin, dry vermouth, olives, ice, and a general unwillingness to question the status quo. You'll also need a cocktail shaker, martini glass, jigger, toothpicks, and an emptiness in your soul that will never be filled. The first step is to fill the martini glass with water and ice. This will make sure our glass is nice and chilled, unlike our planet, which is... <laughs> Next, we'll take our cocktail shaker and throw a handful of ice cubes in there, just enough to fill it about halfway. Meanwhile, medieval peasants worked less hours and had more vacation time than workers today. Are you winning, son? Now to get our drink on. <laughs> classic dry martini is two parts gin and one part dry vermouth. So we'll take our gin, fill the top of the jigger, and throw it in the mixer. Add one more shot of gin, and think about how many people have been sacrificed to COVID-19 on the altar of capital. <laughs> and now we add the dry vermouth. Just fill the jigger once and throw it in. Oh, members of Congress are allowed to make decisions at the federal level on the Ukraine-Russia conflict while also buying and owning stock in weapons manufacturing companies? I'm sure it's just a coincidence that elected politicians always seem to personally benefit from U.S. involvement in armed conflicts. The free market is great. Uh, but I have to say, we're capitalist. Now that we've added the gin and vermouth, we'll put the lid on the mixer and start shaking. Thoroughly shake the mixer for exactly 30 seconds. During this time, we should consider that due to modern advances in technology and productivity, we should be living in a post-scarcity world and working less hours than ever before in history. We produce more than enough food, shelter, and basic resources to meet the needs of every person on Earth, but unfortunately, capitalism has created a world of artificial scarcity in order to justify its own existence. Next, we'll dump the ice water, take the cap off the mixer, and pour our drink into the glass. Don't forget that capitalism is inherently unsustainable and regularly needs to be bailed out after economic crashes created by its very design. Oh, not good. <laughs> now our martini is almost finished. We just need to grab our jar of olives and our toothpicks and stick two olives onto a toothpick. When you do this step, don't forget that a system based on infinite economic growth is inherently incompatible with a planet of finite resources. Nothing wrong. Now we can take our skewered olives and drop them in the glass. Now that we've finished the martini, we can see that capitalism is an economic system based on the means of production being owned and controlled by private individuals to gain profits and accumulate wealth and further private property. And this is what we've created. A world in which the vast majority of us work ourselves to the bone, neglecting our physical and mental health, being denied the pleasures of life and leisure, the pursuits of art and culture, a sense of community and shared prosperity, love and compassion. We have been denied all of this so a select few special people can have more wealth than the gods themselves and just sit on it like dragons or spend it on joy rides to space. Once you take a sip of the martini, you'll probably be hungry, so we're going to need some food. Normally people would just make a meal to eat, but due to the innovations of capitalism, we can just order food on our phones and have it delivered by overworked and underpaid gig workers, undermining a century of labor laws and worker protections. Now that we've got our food and martini, let's take a load off on the couch and watch some shows while we eat and drink. Just, just give, give them, them bread and circuses and they'll never revolt. revolt. Today, we're watching John Oliver's Last Week Tonight. As you watch John Oliver explain the various deeply rooted socioeconomic problems in our world, try and keep in mind that 90% of American media is owned by just six companies who use their platforms to push agendas that are beneficial for their shareholders. Now that we've started watching John Oliver, we can start watching some other left-leaning content creators to learn more about the bad things that are going on in America and the world. 
The more you do this, the more you'll find yourself talking about these issues with your friends and family. Like explaining to your parents that the economic conditions today's youth are experiencing are substantially worse than what they experienced in every conceivable way. Next, you'll need to choose your class list for next semester. You notice one of the poli-sci classes is called Capitalism and Modernity. You've begun to question the validity of the capitalist realism mindset, and you also need a poli-sci credit to graduate, so you take the class. Can't afford a college education? Don't worry, you can just straddle yourself with tens of thousands of dollars of debt for a college degree that is somehow increasingly expensive, decreasing in value, and required by the majority of employers. How? H how can it be all three? Now you're taking an upper-level class about capitalism. You don't always do the readings, but you start picking up new terms like labor exploitation, class consciousness, and Marxism. Begin to expand your base of knowledge. Like if the federal minimum wage had matched the increased rates of productivity and inflation, it would be over $25 an hour. But more importantly, why do wages exist at all? Why do the workers not enjoy the full benefits of their labor? Now if you've done all the previous steps correctly, a global pandemic should spread across the planet a couple of months before you graduate college. Not like anyone saw this coming. Now your last semester of classes is being done remotely. But don't worry, you'll pay the exact same amount for online classes so your college's profit margin won't take a hit. Have an online graduation, enter the workforce, get a modest job as a COVID tester. Slowly become bitter and resentful as the modern work week consumes a third of your life with menial, repetitive, and mind-numbing labor. Rant to your coworkers every day about the horrors of the capitalist system and why we're all being exploited and need to do a revolution. There is no ethical consumption under capitalism. All cops are bastards, and things are going to change. Nothing changes. They actually get worse. The answer is not to defund the police. It's to fund the police. Fund the police. Fund them. Keep working. Keep ranting. Keep complaining. Get frustrated. Follow communist meme pages on social media. Vote for the blue guy just to get the orange guy out of office. Win the election. Hell, win the House and the Senate while you're at it. Feel a brief moment of hope for the future. Watch an attempted insurrection live on TV. Watch Orange Guy face zero consequences for attempted insurrection. Immerse yourself entirely in leftist political discourse. Talk down to your father about the current state of the world. Get stressed as you doom scroll current events. Feel your mental health deteriorate. Watch the blue guy make no meaningful changes and more or less keep things the same as they were under the orange guy. Become disillusioned to the status quo. Realize that both political parties are subservient to the capitalists and neither side will ever try to improve the material conditions of working class Americans. Recognize the American imperialist machine as the evil inescapable force that is destroying our planet. All presidents are war criminals. Feel trapped by the unending suffering caused by capitalist greed. Why am I going to work? Why is no one rioting in the streets anymore? This isn't a conspiracy theory after all, just look at all the publicly available information! They're not even trying to hide it! Get into heated arguments with coworkers and friends. Make Thanksgiving awkward. Have lots of meaningless sex just to feel something. Smoke lots of weed to not feel anything. Watch your best friend move halfway across the country. Feel your life spiraling out of control as you look into the abyss of post-college life. Watch COVID cases rise as people take their masks off and refuse to get vaccinated. Constantly tell people that a violent overthrow of the government needs to happen within the next five years in order to curtail the climate collapse and prevent billions of deaths. Feel a constant weight building on your shoulders. Begin to lose yourself in the fog of societal collapse. Stay in bed for nine hours doing nothing. Question what you want and why you're doing anything at all. Feel small and helpless in an ocean of voices all screaming in agony over the interconnected, incomprehensible global struggles just to stay alive. Begin to feel like everything is pointless because there's nothing we can do to stop it and so we're all just going to die <sighs> and then while you're ranting to a friend once again about the evils of capitalism they ask you a question okay but like what are you doing to help <clears throat> Take some time to reevaluate what you're doing. Start asking yourself if learning about all of the world's problems is worth sacrificing your mental health. Realize that you are not responsible for saving the world and that no one is. <clears throat> Wait, save your complex! Recognize your own privilege and that the world may be on fire, but you have a decent job, a nice apartment, family and friends that love you, and health insurance. So maybe your voice isn't the best one to proclaim all of the inequities of society. Start spending more time working on the things that actually make you happy. Read a book or two. Start going to therapy. Try stand-up comedy. Get into a relationship. Learn about the ways you can actively help build a better world. Start volunteering with mutual aid groups in your neighborhood. Look for opportunities to help others. Make weird cooking tutorials that help spread information about the inequities of capitalism. 
Learn how to recognize when the mainstream media is crafting a narrative to push an agenda. Spend time with your family. Get coffee with your friends. Talk to your roommate. Take a moment to breathe. Relax. The world is on fire, but we're not alone. Take time to talk with others and help create communities of solidarity and kindness. Recognize the greatest act of rebellion against an oppressive and exploitive system is cooperation and compassion. They want us to fight each other because we'll never stop them if we're divided. Accept that no one is going to save us because we need to save each other. And finally, always try to be decent. It's important when you do this step to realize that we are not perfect and people will make mistakes. Things will continue to get darker. But remember that hope is a discipline. That's a quote from Maryam Kaba, an activist and author of today's book, We Do This Till We Free Us. If you're feeling overwhelmed by the state of the world and don't know what to do about it, this is a good place to start. And with that, we have finished our capitalist martini. Thank you all for watching. If you found this video helpful, be sure to hit that like and subscribe button. If you like this video and want to see more, let me know in the comments below. And have a good day. If you have to say, stay poor to those who stand. If you gotta ask what's wrong. If you think the system's fine with how it stands. Don't say another word. lately so just want to take a second say that if you're new here uh, hi nice to meet you also you may have noticed that there's a uh, patreon symbol here so uh, if you should feel so inclined uh, please give me money I hate my day job but anyways thanks for all the positive feedback on these last couple videos it really does mean a lot and um, look forward to seeing you at the next video Bye.